Hello, everybody. These are the notes. So um, this is our little introduction. It's in a Google Doc. Uh, the reason why I'm doing it in a Google Doc is so that um, I can update it every week. Um, so this is just the introduction. Um, the first page, week one, is all about different types of pencils, which I thought you might find useful, um, and different types of inks, because it can be a little bit overwhelming when you go to buy pencils and inks of all the different choices. So, um, so these are all the choices. These are all the things. Um, today, we're going to be mainly focusing on a 2B pencil. So if you don't have a 2B, a HB is fine. Um, but we're kind of going to go in that middle area, a 2B and a HB. So uh, preferably a 2B, it's slightly softer than a HB. Um, and we'll, we will be using um, an ink pen if you have one. So I'm using a Sharpie pen, which is like an ultra fine Sharpie. Um, you can get lots of different uh, nibs here. I think an ultra fine is about a one, um, but uh, you know, you can get all sorts of different nibs. Um, you'll need a ruler, a razor, um, and a sketchbook if you have one or some paper. So just have a look at the types of shading. We're gonna be doing some practice exercises this week to start with. So types of shading, types of shapes, um, and shadow. So that's, and then there will be homework. And then I just wanna go through the curriculum for the rest of the six weeks. So week two, we're gonna look at light sources, how to put light into your drawing. So we're gonna do some actual practice landscapes um, and we're gonna look at light sources. So we're gonna be doing like some trees and some different rocks, for instance. A lot of people have challenges drawing rocks. So we're gonna be just yeah. drawing some um, various objects and looking at uh, single light sources and multiple light sources. Uh, week three, we're going to be looking at one and two point perspective. Um, so how to get the feeling of distance in your drawings. Uh, week four, we're going to do a bit more on landscapes and multiple point perspective. So this is where we start getting into slightly more complicated drawing. Um, uh, and um, we're going to be looking at perspective in objects too. And then week five, we're going to do faces. And I'm going to give you a cheat system, a grid system, how to draw faces. Um, so it's going to be faces from different angles. So how to draw faces straight on, how to do tilted faces, looking down, looking up, and how everything changes. So anybody who's ever wanted to do portraits, um, I'm just going to give you a few cheat sheets on how to get uh, faces. Um, and then week six, we're going to do a little bit on figure drawing. So um, we're going to take it right down to the bare bones, quite, quite re um, literally. And then we're going to be adding muscle and tone and finally close onto the figures. So um, how to kind of get some drop figures in movement and different poses. So um, if there is anything that you are desperate to learn that I haven't mentioned already, please let me know. Um, I am moving away from the typical let's draw a bowl of fruit because I think we've all done it before and it's not very interesting. So I won't be making anybody draw a bowl of fruit unless you really want to. If you want to draw a bowl of fruit as part of the homework, that's fine. Um, each week I will be setting homework. The homework is optional. You get points for the homework. Um, if you want to, you can share your homework the next week, or you can just share it with me privately um, at the end of class. But it's kind of fun. I do want this to be an interactive, sociable course where we can help each other and support each other. And um, especially if sometimes if we think something isn't that great, we can share <laughs> it and we can appreciate each other's styles and um, you might find that somebody learns from something you've done. So I hope it's going to be something beneficial. And as I say, if you get all your points, you're going to get a nice little jazzy certificate from me. Um, we are going to draw five boxes or circles. It's up to you. You can draw squares or you can draw circles. We're going to draw five things that we can practice some shading. All I ask is if you are drawing squares, put a little space in between them so that if we spill over, it's not going to affect the next box. 
Um, I'm going to be doing squares because it's easier. But if you want to draw around something round and um, and practice, uh, you know, your shading in a in a round object, then um, that's totally fine. Or you can practice, you can do square for today and then practice round in your own time. So, um, but just quickly, um, hatching is when you have lines going in one direction. Cross hatching is when they go in both directions, literally as it says, cross hatching. Um, scumbling is kind of fun because it's kind of more sort of scribbling. Um, I use scumbling a lot when I'm painting. A stippling is those little tiny dots. If anybody ever does zentangles, you might be used to doing stippling. Um, and then blending smudging, which is lots of fun but um you'll find when we start going into different pencil leads that um blending and smudging is much easier with a softer pencil speaking of which the pencils going quickly back to our pencils i noticed that dollarama has a set of all of these pencils for two dollars in a nice little metal tin um so everything I'm recommending does not cost a fortune. You don't have to go to an art store. You can get everything from the dollar store. Um, but they do have a nice set of all of these pencils for $2 at the moment in a metal tin. Um, I don't have commission with dollar armor. I just find that art supplies are quite useful. <laughs> it's starting. So if you're doing more of the smudging, um, something softer like a, between a 4B and a 6B would be the, the best friend for you for that type of sketching. Something like the um, the scumbling. Um, you might want to go somewhere a little bit lighter, more like a HB or an F. But as I say, when we're doing it, I'm going to go through all of the pencils. You can also do most. The only one you can't do with ink is the smudging. You could do it with ink, but it would be a bit messy. So, okay, I'm going to stop sharing for now. And I say, I want this to be fun and interactive. So hopefully this will be uh, lots of fun for everybody. So I'm going to switch cameras now at any point. I'm here to help. Just uh, feel free to interrupt me, ask questions. If you want to leave your mics on, it's a, it's a fairly small class. So you know, feel free to chat while we're doing this. So let's start by drawing some squares. I'm going to draw these in ink because can everybody see my um my paper okay? Yeah. That's lined up okay? Yeah. Uh, I'll just make this a little bit lighter. Okay. If ever this goes off camera shot. Okay, so um, I'm going to draw some boxes. So I'm going to draw five boxes. I'm going to make them quite generous in size. So I'm going to do mine three inches. I promised Dean I'd record this as, as well as for you because he was so upset he wasn't doing this course tonight because <laughs> you know he <laughs> loves to draw. We had lots of uh, yeah, he was very sad today because he really wanted to do it. So I'm going to draw myself an extra box. So I'm going to do six in case I decide to try something else.
Okay, so we are going to imagine that there is a light source on our page. We're going to label each page. So this is going to be, um, we're going to call this um, types of shading. I'm hoping this book will be something you'll keep and add to and use to practice. So um, I would recommend putting a few blank pages in between each exercise. So if you decide to practice them at home, yeah. you can practice even kind of parallel pages. So we're going to decide where our light source is. So I'm going to put a little arrow. This is often what we do when we're painting as a little, or at least when we're composing paintings, we're going to put a little arrow to show that my light is coming from here. So anything in this corner, in this area is going to be the lightest and anything in the opposite side. So this corner and this side is going to be dark, but my darkest area is going to be in this corner. My lightest area is going to be in this corner. So you might even find it useful to put a zero in the corner, which is your lightest, and a nine in the corner. That's going to be the darkest. And anybody who's been in my painting class might know why I use these numbers, but I'm going to give you a little scale that might be useful. So my scale is if you imagine that zero is white and nine is black. And I'm gonna draw myself a little, little line. Okay. And then in the middle, So the center point is gray. So everything, we're gonna have a scale in between. So I'll often, when I'm uh, teaching a paint class, I'll say, okay, we're gonna paint a sky and it's a number two on the value scale, or it's, we're gonna paint a rock and it's a number eight or nine or a tree. So. This just helps me explain how dark something's going to be. Tonight, we're only using black and white, so the value scale is very simple. So we've got one, that's one, two, three, four, that's five, six, seven, eight, nine. So if you imagine that zero is white and nine is black, where our light source is, zero is our, like basically no shading and nine is gonna be our darkest shading. And then we're gonna write underneath each of these boxes, the type of shading we're gonna do. So we're gonna call this one hatching. This one's gonna be Cross hatching. This one is stippling. Oh, I, I don't know. This one is scumbling. This one is blending or otherwise known as smudging. And this one is a have some fun and <laughs> play with this one. We're going to leave this one as a whatever you want it to be. Maybe you'll invent something new. A free for all. So give me a little thumbs up when you've drawn your boxes, you've done your labels, and you're ready for the next stage. This is like, we're not gonna leave anybody on the Titanic tonight. Everybody gets on a lifeboat. So <laughs> we're not leaving anybody behind. If you fall behind, we're all gonna wait for you, okay? Where did the word scumbling come from? I love it. I don't know, but it's something I've 
I mean, it's it's tran it's across the Atlantic because I used it in art college in England and over here. So really, it's yeah. I wonder who invented it. I wonder who invented it. I think it's been around a long time, and the hatching and cross hatching and yeah. Joe Scumble. Joe Scumble. Is it really? <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> yeah, but I'm, what did I'm he making, do? I'm making <laughs> things up. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Playing too much balderdash. <laughs> okay. So um I'm gonna pick um the easiest one to start with, and that is actually scumbling. It is scribbling you can even put scribbling as a little scribbling so just remember zero is white nine is black okay um so you can do this with ink or with the pencil the scumbling um I'm going to try and do it with the pencil and see if it shows up on the camera. I may have to do it with a darker pencil than you're using for it to show up, but let's let's try it. I want everybody to see this very carefully. I am going to zoom in. Um, so give me a minute. I hope nobody feels seasick. I'm just going to zoom right in. Is that in focus for everybody? Yes. Okay. So I'm using a 2B pencil. Um, you can go heavier than that. So Jean, if you did want to use your 3B, you could do. There is a technique. So once you get part, once you get into the Bs, they tend to um, you know, it's you tend to get a bit of a black hand and they can smudge. So one, there's different artists have different things. You can buy this special glove and it's got like a thing that just goes around your finger and here to stop you getting pencil oh, mark on there. Right. Um, but what some people just put a cloth underneath their hand or a paper towel. If, if you're doing a large area and it's a beautiful drawing and you don't want to get so there there is like little devices, but um you know I I tend I'll either put something underneath or I'll just try and be careful. But you'll find you'll find what I mean when you start doing more on the charcoal side of things or like the six b's you can end up getting quite a dirty piece of paper <laughs> shall we say okay so let's have a go at the scumbling to start with so we're gonna just start with is that showing up yep pencil okay so imagine that nine is the darkest so we're just gonna scribble now as we get Closer to the middle, I'm going to start pressing lighter on my pencil. And I'm going to make the, the little circles kind of a little bit larger. I would say do less to start with because you can always put more on later. We're going to try not to use our eraser for these. We're going to try and work in layers rather than. So you see how I'm using like hardly any pressure as I get to my light source corner. I find this quite relaxing. So if you have um, softer pencils, I would say do the first, first like layer, at least get the idea down in the, the more the middle um bees of the the pencil and then once you have got the ideas down then you can always switch to a heavier pencil and if anybody has um procreate on the ipad 
and actually wants to do this on an iPad instead of um, real pencil and paper, you are welcome to. So scumbling doesn't have to be little circles like I'm doing. It can actually be kind of more random, like this kind of thing. It doesn't have to be any kind of geometric shapes. That sort of reminds me of the tree when we were doing the foliage and the trees. Yes, yeah, they all, all of these different shading techniques have different uses, multiple uses. And all of these techniques can be done with paint as well. And they can be done with ink, say apart from the smudging. Uh, they can be done with different materials like your um, your pastels, crayons, you know. You can do it with ink if you use your ink like watercolor. Yeah. Water down the ink to get yeah. different values. Yeah. So let's try going heavier now in the middle here. And what you could do is when you do a box, if you've only used one pencil, just write in the corner what type of pencil you use so you remember for next time. So I'm going to put a 2B there. This is the set I got from uh, Dollarama. It was pretty good. So yeah, try a heavier pencil if you want. I'm gonna try a 3B. And think about your value scale where nine is basically black and zero is white. And when you have done that, we are going to move on to hatching. And I have a little example of hatching here. This is a little bit of fake wood burning, which I play with. Um, so it's kind of a form of hatching where all of the lines are, it's just made, it's made up of lines, like lots of lines, but they're all going in one direction. So hatching is basically lines in one direction. So that's an example of hatching. Now I do have an example of stippling, which is the little dots. So can you see the, the stippling, which I did here? Yeah. And then this is scumbling. I'll zoom off a little bit. So this is, um, I, I did scumbling here. So stippling, scumbling, and then hatching. So just to show how you can use them in um, different, you know, different techniques for different purposes. Mm -hmm. Is everybody ready to have a go at hatching? 
Yeah. I always feel like it's some kind of violent act hatching, like, you know, like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like a, a hatchet or something. Oh, I was thinking of baby chicks. Oh, oh you're thing. thinking of something nice. I was thinking of something like, <laughs> like an axe murder or something. So, <laughs> okay, same thing as before. Zero for our white, nine for the black area. Let's try and have all of our shadows going in the same direction, just so we've got a nice comparison. Um, again, I'm going to use the two B. You can use a, a harder pencil if you want, a 2B or a B. I'm going to use a 2B. Um, this is where it's kind of useful to have that little bit of a cloth so that you're not going to smudge the scumbling that you've just done. So hatching. I'm just going to do... So with hatching, the idea is we're going to kind of apply pretty much the same amount of pressure we're just going to do less lines the higher up we go towards our light source. So I'm going to start off with uh, about the same amount. I'm going to add more to the darker areas. So we're always going in the same direction. Uh, hatching's used a lot when we do faces. Um, especially when we're getting, um, you know, the texture of hair or fur with animals. I get towards my light source, I'm going to slowing down doing last. And then I'm going to go back to the beginning. I'm going to do a lot more lines and closer together at my number nine. So you don't necessarily need to press any harder. It's just about the number of the density of the line, shall we say. Um, Julie, I can't quite see. Are your lines attached to zigzags or are you lifting so each line is detached from the other? Each line is a separate little line. I'll do it. I'll do it in slow mo. So are you using the tip or the side of the pencil? I'm now? using the, the tip. Ah. There's just many, many little lines. Um, if it's hard to see, I can switch to ink. Would that be useful if I switch to ink? Maybe. It, so, it wasn't that I, it's not that I can't see the line. It was, I just couldn't make out what you were, your hand was moving fairly quickly. Oh, I, I was speeding. I was speeding. I just okay. couldn't see if you were lifting at the end of each line. Or no, I'm drawing okay. and lifting. Yeah, you know, let's do it really slow. Like you slow were doing, work. you were sort of sweeping forward and then down and up and down, up and down, up and down, you know. So lots of short lines. There we go. But where I want it darker, my lines are closer together and really overlapping. Like this. And then here, they're very far apart. so cool in one way um when you when you do hatching with ink it's a lot it's a lot more striking i'll do a little example of ink in the corner here so if i was gonna do hatching with ink i'm gonna do a little mini square here there's my little mini square so 
you see how with the ink I'm doing these little lines like really really close together and then as I start getting away from that corner my lines are getting further apart so that's kind of what you want to do with the Is there so, any rules of thumb as to the length of the lines? No, I mean, it started longer and then started going shorter. Just do you do variety or keep try and keep the length the same? It doesn't really matter. Um, and you can even overlap long and short. Um, it, it depends what you're using it for. Like something like this feather, I did long lines and slightly curved ones. And I just put them very close together where I wanted it darker and further apart because I wanted the feeling of the feather. Um, I, If I'm doing fur, like I just did a sketch of a squirrel and obviously the fur is very short. So I did shorter little lines, but then for the tail, I did longer lines. So you can adapt it based on what it's for really. So oh, that makes sense. Thanks. Yeah. Um, so I, I recently did a cat as well. And again, around the nose of the cat, the hatching was very short. And then, you know, as it got further away to the sides of the face, the hatching was a lot longer. I hope that makes sense. I was thinking my question was more for inanimate objects, you know, where. Yeah, with it's a up to you. Yeah, um, I think it's up to you and your style, and I think you'll develop your own style the, the more you practice. And, and cross hatching is exactly what it says on the tin. It's just what we've done, but we're doing it in two, two different directions. So I'll just move on to, I mean, take your time. I want everybody to have a good practice of these, but I'm gonna do a little quick demonstration of the cross hatching with a little mini square here so the cross hatching will do the same thing but we're also going in the opposite direction and it gives you more density um i'll often i'll often do cross hatching if i'm doing a still life you know like a coffee mug or something like that is there one particular type of shading that goes with one particular type of drawing or is it really up to the person who draws i think it's really up to your drawing style um i follow a, a lot of different artists on youtube and it's good to build up your own collection of artists mm -hmm. that you subscribe to and look at the different styles there's there's one artist that only uses smudging for all of and they mainly do portraits and they only use smudging um and then there's artists that only sketch in ink and only use cross hatching so um i think it's good to kind of follow different artists look at the styles look mm. at the different techniques um get some books out on the library and um i mean i'm more of a show me kind of person so I have a huge Pinterest board on different artists shading and sketching techniques um and the I mean I've given you five here but there's literally hundreds you know there's yeah. there's many many different um you know and um you can you can double up so um just showing you this one let's so this is um, 
a combination of I made like little bubbles yeah and then I did scumbling and stippling um and I think I did a bit of hatching there too so you know you can combine um, okay. I'll often doodle on these boxes it's kind of a bit of stress relief for me and then I'll make them into Christmas gifts <laughs> <laughs> um, so if you ever want to do something like this um you just get a little wooden box but varnish it first otherwise it just bleeds everywhere yeah you, you need a smooth set so you varnish it sand it varnish it again and then use uh i use brown sharpies i do do wood burning but um you know if you want to do like fake wood burning then um That's a bit of doing. clear wood varnish light sand varnish it again and then when it's completely dry it gives you a very smooth surface and they make nice little gifts you know it's a nice way of doodling but making it into something useful you can you know you give to someone yeah absolutely give to you know well sometimes if i'll put you know things in like if i'm giving somebody a little bit of jewelry or something i'll give them a wooden box and then it's like a gift box that can be reused <laughs> many yeah. times you yeah. know Excuse me, was it a brown, um, a brown, a, what What was the brown pencil or brown? Um... Brown Sharpie. So one of these. Oh, brown Sharpie. Brown. Yeah, oh. Brown Sharpie, yeah. Oh, okay. Good yeah. idea. Yeah. So I, I do a lot of kids' classes with the, I call it fake wood burning. And um, I'll just buy a bunch of different boxes or, you know, even those bird houses like all different shapes and sizes and I'll sand them and varnish them for the kids and then I'll just take a whole bunch of brown sharpies into the class and then they can doodle away <laughs> and the nice thing about these different types of shading techniques is if you do one and you don't like it you can do something else on top so you can turn hatching into cross hatching you can scumble on top you know you can you can kind of even if you're working in ink you can add different techniques and layer different techniques so going back to your question as to is there a you know a certain type of shading depending on the object it's really up to you I would say just follow what you feel comfortable people. with yeah and have some fun with it you know mm. um let's have a little go with the cross hatching so I tend to do a few in one direction and then change so I I find it easy to work in little sections but I know some people will do the whole section one way and then go over it later so again this is just a a preference and uh, again length of lines is up to you I tend to do them about a centimeter long naturally I think it's just my that's the way I, I do things but um but this is really good for um, textures. You know, if you're doing material, um, so like if you draw in, I know, a, I do a scene with like a picnic, you know, and different foods on a picnic blanket, or, you know, um, if you're doing cloth, you know, like towels that, you know, anything kind of material. Do we need to keep our pencil sharp? Yeah. Yes. True. And, and it will get worn out very quickly. I have a little electric sharpener, which has been a lifesaver because especially when I do a class with a lot of kids and they're all using multiple pencils, I was getting a repetitive strain injury with my <laughs> so uh i have a like kind of electric sharpener and it was the best 30 dollars i've ever spent <laughs> it is most useful when classes started again i had to sharpen all my kids pencils I ended up with a blister oh. <laughs> which is really when it's 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 quite funny when you think about it like it's a yeah. work injury before classes start sharpening yeah. pencils sharpening pencils yeah julie when you were talking about um youtube videos to watch or like books to go to the library um or artists to follow on youtube like do you have any recommendations or any favorites that you could share yes um what i'll do is i'll put a bunch of links uh in my next email if that's useful yeah, um, 
yeah. and I, I'll I can put a playlist together on my YouTube channel and I think I can share it so that might be useful the, there might be something a bit more clever I can do and actually just share a playlist I'm sure I can do that should be able to share the playlist and just yeah, yeah it should work Um, is it best if, if uh, the two directions are basically at um, right angles? Yeah, I would say so. I mean, obviously you could. It doesn't have to just go one way and then the other way. But I find, you know, we think of a cross, hence the cross hatching. Yeah, I think I find it easier to do a little block of one direction and then go yeah. back over it for, for me so far just yeah. practicing but don't forget the lines are going to get less the further away we get from our shadow area so if you imagine like right here in the corner there's not going to be much at all maybe just the odd few lines you know So funny, I just donated all, I was having a big clear out because I've got just too much stuff. And I kept all these books from art college from like years and years ago. And I just donated them all. And Dean's like, have you got any books on sketching? And I'm like, oh, <laughs> oh. That never fails. They I were getting quite mildewy though, I have to say. He likes doing the, the I mean, I just find YouTube so good now. You can and Pinterest. You can, there's, you know, it's it's lovely. I think it's a great time to be an artist because they can get so much more exposure without having to do lots of galleries and you know shows. Oh, by the way, I'm just gonna plug my art show now. Uh, the nineteenth of <laughs> shameless plug alert. The nineteenth of November. I'm having an art sale at Flamborough Senior Centre in the Waterdown Library. And my table, I it's to support the senior centre. So my table, uh my table purchase was to raise money for the senior centre. And also I teach there, so it's to kind of <coughs> support the students that I teach, but I will be trying to offload some of my many surplus paintings that my husband keeps saying uh taking over the house so can't keep everything right <laughs> but you can see so i mean there's some very talented artists and it's it's kind of fun to see their work there's, 10 till 3 next Saturday. At the Flameborough Library, is that what you said? Yeah, the Waterdown Library on Dundas Street in Waterdown. And it's... Oh. It, oh, the senior wow. center is in a room within the library. So if you go in the front entrance, there's like a corridor that kind of go on a slope down and it's just at the bottom of that slope. So that's the water down library then. Uh... Water down library, the, the newish one. It's only been there a few years. How are we doing with our cross hatching? <laughs> it's hard. Yeah, I, I find it say, the hardest, so hardest so far anyway. Yeah. So, so take a break from it. I mean, I just want you to get a little practice. You don't have to complete the whole box. It's just so you get an idea of the difference. Okay. So um, stippling, I am actually going to do this one in ink. Because I feel that it would be easiest to show you in ink. 
Um, stippling, uh, you can even do it with something a little bit thicker than this if you want. Um, so stippling is when you do lots of little dots. Oh boy. And the dots get further apart the lighter you want to go. So that's why it's easier to do this in ink. I mean, you, you can do it in pencil, but it's... Um, I always think stippling is like, you know, you, tattoo artists do this, like, just many, many little micro dots. <laughs> I don't know much about tattoo artists, but I imagine this is what they do. They like, do that for shading. For, for yeah. That's what a paper is, is a bunch of dots. Yeah. Right. So it's just a bunch of dots and the dots, imagine like um, planets that are getting, or stars that are getting further apart the, the further away from the shadow area. Can we use a Sharpie for that instead of the pencil then? Absolutely, you can use a Sharpie. So as I say, that the homework, if you choose to do it, is to pick three of these techniques, three different shapes. And I want you to, it's a good thing to do whilst watching the TV. I'm learning about cheating and stickling and hatching and stumbling. <laughs> it's like, so funny. It's, a word, eh? <laughs> it's like a whole new language, right? Yeah. What's new and exciting? I'm uh, just gonna mute. Nothing. No. I'm not sure who's talking. So. Okay. Here we go. So um. I have seen people do this holding like three pens together, like all taped together. <laughs> I have double ended pens. I have some pens that have two different colored inks. <laughs> so it's like two pens joined together. That's and funny. Yeah, I don't know where they are, but the, it's like two. Um, they're, a, they're a really cool pen, actually. I'll see if I, I can find them. Fun. Yeah, so it's like orange and green together like and it's two little fine inks like next to each other and you can do some really fun you can do some pretty cool drawings with that yeah oh shoot so yeah just think about like um al almost like like a firework that's gone off and as it gets further away from the the explosion then it's uh I spilt ground coffee on my white floor today. It sort of looks like my white floor with the coffee grounds. Oh, you it. did stip it. See, you could just say you did it on purpose to practice for your course. <laughs> Maybe like a, it's like a sneeze, right? I want to mute. Yeah. <laughs> so, can I call you back in, in about 20 minutes? Yeah. Yeah, because I got to finish my course and evidently my Julie. phone is going on to them. Uh, Julie, I just have a question about the course. Yeah. Um, so does it matter if somebody, like, can somebody join just for one night? I mean, if they missed tonight, is, you know what I mean? Um, I'm asking people to sign up for the whole course, um, but I can yeah. provide videos and notes if they can't make every session. 
Okay. Just because I've kind of designed it so it flows from one week to another and I wouldn't want to have to like repeat everything, you know, um, just yeah. to be fair to everybody else. Got it. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Just yeah. Okay. Last one. And then you have like a, a free one, a free box is blending Ooh. and smudging so do we switch if we have like a i have a 5d would that work better yeah go for a soft one okay so um yeah you can use a 4b 5b now there's a couple of ways to smudge you can use your finger you can use a soft cloth or some people actually use an eraser to smudge Depending on how soft you, I you have are. um, I have those sponges. Those makeup sponges. Would that work? Oh yeah, they should. They might work. Yeah, Just give it a go. Back. Okay. Yeah, that might that might work. So I start with the pencil more on its side. <clears throat> this is where you kind of don't want it too sharp. And I'm gonna kind of shade first and then blend when I've got a little bit of lead down on the paper. But you can go in any direction, eh? Any direction. I saved the easiest one to last. What would you use these for in drawing, uh, in, in drawing like a landscape? Oh, um, it's style? good for anything really. And it is just a style preference. Um, do a lot of blending on if I'm doing faces like cheekbones, you know, um, any areas where you really want to show uh, softness. Yeah. Um, oh. And then you can just use your finger to blend. So we have a lot of oil naturally in our skin and you kind of activate it by rubbing. And say so this works very well with the, you know, soft pastels and it works quite well with pencil as well. The nice thing about this is if you're doing something where you want to add a tiny bit of a shadow somewhere else, you can lift up some lead from one area and then apply it to another area, you know, like you can put it somewhere else. Like... This is quite nice the way it comes out. Yeah. But it is kind of messy. You gotta. Yeah. No. Oh, it looks like it's the one that gives out the, the nicest shading. Yeah. Like the, the most even shading, I should say. That's yeah. 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 I'll do a little zoom out so you can see them all next to each other i'm just gonna lift this up a little bit
And it's kind of nice to see them, you know, next to each other. And then you can you can see where maybe you need to add, you know, a bit more. I'm really interested to know which one is your favorite. <laughs> Merging for sure. <laughs> the stippling's quite nice too. It's like a a lighter a lighter thing, but the the smudging is definitely it, it, it's the most striking, I would say. Yeah, yeah. I had the most fun with scumbling. Scumbling, excellent. It was fun <laughs> and relaxing. Yeah. I think stippling is the only one that really worked out for me. None of my zeros are very white, to be honest. I just made them all really dark, unfortunately. <laughs> it's just so, practice, really. And the yeah. zeros have nothing on them, or do you have to go up into the corner? No, I pretty much have nothing in the corner of the zero, because the zero is just the white paper. There's right, nothing okay. on the zero. Yeah. go wash my hands oh i know i always ha normally have some baby wipe <laughs> handy for like wiping off my hands yeah i'll do that next time i'm gonna go to this thing yeah because you end up with yeah dirty paper <laughs> otherwise you can yeah. see why they invented that little glove for your pinky finger <laughs> yeah for sure okay so um moving on i'm gonna i would say always leave maybe a blank page in between so that A, it protects your work from the print moving over and also it gives you a practice sheet in between. So I'm gonna leave an extra page there. And then um, our next page is types of shapes. So 2D and 3D shapes. And then we're gonna have a go at um, using those shading techniques to um, to give them form. So we're going to start with some two dimensional shapes. So um, we're going to separate our paper into three sections. Stop a little bit. So it doesn't have to be particularly neat and tidy. I'm going to use my ink to separate. We're separating our page into three sections. Um, so we're going to draw in the first section 2D shapes. And then the next section is going to be 3D shapes. And this one is going to be with shadows. And we're going to draw a square. A circle, a triangle, and a rectangle. So if you want to draw around a penny or something for your circle, you can do something round. I'm 
I've got this. <laughs> I'm gonna draw around that. Don't know where it came from, but it was a circle I found that was the right size. What does the very bottom one say? I'm sorry, I can't read it. Oh, so we're gonna do three D and what's the bottom? One? Uh, it's gonna be with with shadows. So you can repeat these shapes in each section. So it's the same shape in each section.
Call Marshall. Please call Marshall or one other. Okay, how are we doing with that? I'm ready. Yep. Okay. What does oh, the Julie, what does the last section say? It 2D, says 3D. with shadows. 2D, 3D, and with, with shadows. shadows. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, it's so small. Yeah. So the good news is the first set of shapes, you don't need to do anything with those. <laughs> you don't need to do anything at all. These shapes we are going to turn into three dimensional shapes. So uh, let's start with an easy one. We're going to start with our rectangle and we're going to turn it into a cylinder. So to turn, so this is really handy for if you're going to paint, draw a mug or, you know, a glass of some kind. So we're going to just, I'm going to do this in pencil. I'm going to imagine that there's, we're going to find the central point. It's always quite useful to find just roughly where the the center is okay and I'm going to start by doing a curve line the reason why I do the center is so I know I get it even on both sides it kind of I'm going to do a curve line and then I'm going to repeat that curve line down here And then I'm going to loop this round and make this into like a an oval shape. I'm going to make this into an oval shape. So whenever I'm sketching, instead of doing a solid line, I try to do these little lines so I can, and then eventually I'll ink it once I get the lines the way I want them. So I'm going to curve off these edges, get rid of the pointy bits. And because I, I, I did this in ink, I can't erase these lines, but I would be erasing this and this. So this becomes a cylinder. So would you would you erase for the cylinder at the back of the circle, if you like, on the, on the yeah, bottom? Yeah. So I'll I'll link it so you can see where. 
So the areas I'm deleting is this middle line here. But yeah, if it was a translucent cylinder, then I would keep that there. But if it's if it's yeah. a solid cylinder, that yeah, I see what you mean. Then that would be yeah. If it was a cup, then you wouldn't see. Yeah. But you might want to, when you're sketching it, put that in just so you get the angle the same. So when you draw your cup for your homework, I would I would sketch these in and then erase them later or ink it. We're going to for now pretend these are translucent shapes. <laughs> So the triangle is very similar at the bottom. Um, we're going to make the uh, the triangle into a cone. So we're going to do the same thing. So again, we'll put that. Again, this, if it wasn't translucent, would go. Again, I do find it quite useful to put a center point just to make sure I get that even. And of course, I would erase this bit if, um, if it wasn't translucent. So say I'm drawing a party hat or something like that. It's hard to know just how high or how narrow you should make that top of the arch. It. This is why I wanted you to do a still life for your homework. So you can you can kind of look at it from different angles because it depends on where it is, you know. If you're looking at, you know, a, a cylinder, it depends on the angle. If you're looking at more from the top or if you're looking at it, straight on you know it depends on how you're looking at it okay so let's have a look at the circle which is going to be a sphere so, um, so this one's a cone, this one's a severe. Um, so imagine this is the world and we're gonna put it on an axis because the world is rotating on an axis. So there's a reason why we're gonna put it on an axis. And I'm going to, draw a few because the light and the shape is going to bend around this sphere. So say it's a globe or it's a planet or it's a football, sorry, soccer ball. It all depends on, you know, where that axis is. So if we're doing a stripey ball, we'd need to look at the axis. And then this one is a cube. But if we're drawing Christmas presents. <laughs> and cubes are interesting, again, depending on what angle you're looking at them. Because as 
later on in the course we're going to talk about vanishing points because as things get further away vanishing points get closer together but just for this exercise we're going to make all of the lengths the same but when we start looking at vanishing points and um i might get us to do an, an um an exercise of doing a building you'll notice that as it gets further away these angles be they're not the same length because we want to get the the vanishing points of feeling of perspective but just for this this case we're going to do everything the same length for now so we're going to draw two lines same angle and same length okay just just for the sake of today then we're going to do this angle the same and imagine this is a transparent cube So we're just imagining it's completely transparent cube and everything's the same. Then we're going to have a little game of join the dots. So I'm going to join this one, this one. This one and this one. So I didn't use a ruler, as you can tell. The one shape um, I haven't done is a pyramid. So if you wanted to turn this one into a pyramid instead of shading it as a cone, you can do. <clears throat> Py pyramid would be taking this line down at an angle, a bit like the cube and then doing doing something like that. Pyramids can be a little bit tricky. <clears throat> so this is our last exercise. So you can take your time on this one. We're going to repeat what we did here, down here, but we're going to add shadows. And not just um, the shadows inside the objects, we're going to add the cast shadow. So, um, so often when we're doing paintings or sketches, uh, I know sometimes I forget about the cast shadow and that's where you need to decide it's it's pretty important where your light source is coming from. And the cast shadow is where we're going to start introducing vanishing points. So I'm going to screen share my notes. Oh. Can everybody see my screen? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, can you see my little pointer there? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So have a look at the circle and how it's then made into a sphere. And without asking a silly question, who can tell me where the light is coming from? Where would you position the light? Above, below, left, right, um, 
right left <laughs> above left, left above left above yeah so it's coming this way yeah oh, it's pretty yeah. much coming central to be, you know slightly above but yeah it's coming kind of this way yeah now uh just a quick introduction to vanishing points can you see how as the shadow is getting further away it's it's kind of narrowing the same on the cone the severe the shadow is flattening with the cube again the shadow is kind of disappearing so this is all vanishing points so it's something we're going to go into more detail when we do more of our landscape sketches but you can see the the vanishing points as shadows retreat they get flattened and they get thinner as they get further away um so if we have a light source and multiple objects the shadow is not necessarily going to go all in the same direction because depending on where the object is so we're going to do an exercise with a, a forest and trees with one light source but trees in different spaces so you can see how the shadow moves depending on where the tree is positioned to the light source it sounds complicated but we're basically just going to draw lines and put the shadows in different places later on as an exercise on um shadows because shadows i find can be quite challenging in a painting as well so where do i put the shadows um i just did a class this week um where we painted a dock a receding dock and there was shadows on the dock and the shadows were of posts that were either side of the dock and the shadows were changing because as the posts were moving down away from the light source the angle of the shadow was changing so um so we'll cover that but when you do your homework um what would be useful is if you have a lamp against your object and you look at where the shadow is being cast um it might not be obvious so you might have two shadows if you've got multiple light sources in a room you might find there's lots of shadows but just pick kind of the main shadow like one shadow to make things useful but when when you start getting into more technical drawing you might have like three different light sources going on so you might have three three shadows happening like a dark shadow and two lighter shadows because um you know the object might have multiple light sources so um so let's just we're gonna we're gonna work on these ones we're just gonna practice the other thing i wanted you to look at is because the light is coming from the side up above there's still a shadow but it's lighter it's not as dark so you see how the shadow's darker on the cube on the right hand side but above it's lighter so you can do your shading using any technique of the different shading that we've just practiced i'm going to yeah. leave that up to you so we're just going to shut that as our last exercise we're going to draw these objects we're going to practice our shadows and then we can talk about the homework is that okay for tonight mm -hmm. um okay so let's repeat these shapes don't worry about doing them perfectly it's more just a, an exercise so we're we not finished Okay, I'm going to make this into cylinder. I'm going to turn this pyramid. I think I'll keep it as a pyramid. And then um, my sphere. Okay. So I'm going to use a, a soft pencil because you'll find that soft pencils, it's, they tend to be quicker to shade.
They come to life once you apply the shading. Shadows also are darker the closer they are to the object. And then they get lighter as they get. So as well as receding, they get lighter. Could you repeat that first part again? So as shadows get further away from the object, they get lighter. So when they're close to the object, the shadow is quite dark. And as they get further away, the the shadow is is lighter in color in value so you see my cylinder shadow here is quite dark close to the cylinder and as it gets further away from the cylinder it's lighter <laughs> Julie, in the in terms Hi. of should in the terms of values, should the darkest part of the cast shadow be lighter or darker than the darkest shadow on the object? I tend to do the shadows um, a, a couple of shades lighter. So if my darkest, I mean, it also depends on the color of the object when you start applying color, but. Um, so if if say my um, my cube is the shadow is a number uh, the the shadow on the object is a number eight then my cast shadow would be more like a six seven and then as it gets further away it might be more like a three four. Okay, great, thanks. Yeah. I mean, sometimes you have to use a bit of artistic license when you're looking at a real object because it might look like it's the same um same value but um the world is not in black and white you know and sometimes you can get the same value you know you change in the color so you get the same effect but you can tell that they separate from each other because of different colors but if we're sketching in black and white sometimes we have to make it lighter just 
so it's not confusing to the eye, you know. I don't know what time I've finished. Okay, so I'm going to quickly go over the homework again. I'm just going to screen share for a second. So your homework, if you want to do it, no obligation to do it, but um, I think you'll find it really useful, is to take three objects to draw from life. And you get one point for each object. So here's a few examples of objects. Um, I'd like you to practice different shading techniques and try and do three different shapes. So you might choose a ball, a cup, um, and a cube, for instance. Um, I put in there a Rubik's cube. You could try a, a, a ball of some kind, some kind of sphere, or you could try a cube of some kind. Um, try and find an object that's fairly basic. We don't want to make life too complicated. Um, you know, a tall glass. And um, I would recommend putting a light next to it so that you can see a definite light source. And then just kind of draw what you see using these shapes as, as kind of help. Um, have a look at the shadows um, and see how you do. <laughs> and please bring it to the class next week. <laughs> Bye, Thanks, everybody. Bye, Bye everybody. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Okay. Good night. Bye. Bye. Bye.